How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. How's it going, Mr. Hoff? Hey. Nice. We're back after our little hiatus from uh, <laughs> vacation and summer and life. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's time to get on and shoot another video. So, yeah, today, here's what we got. Uh, if you've watched our previous videos, this is the uh, Proxmox server that we had uh, TrueNAS installed on. And my plan was to uh, use it as uh, uh, storage for our videos. And I, and I wanted to edit directly from this. And it's just not really capable. Can't, the bandwidth for the network is just not enough. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to upgrade to uh, proper server chassis. And we're going to put these two 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet cards in. And uh, we got some Cat7 cables right here. And we're going to see what kind of uh, before and after we get. It'll be faster. I think it'll, yeah, should be much faster. Faster, yeah. Yep. And if I can, if I can edit directly from this, and, th and that's the goal, I'm going to be happy. Because my, my main editing rig doesn't have a lot of storage. And when you're shooting YouTube videos, especially 4K, they take up some space, let me tell you. So yeah, without further ado, let me uh, get set up and we're, we're going to swap the hard drives into those cages and uh, put the uh, mix in and whatnot. And uh, yeah, back in a bit. Okay, there's all the uh, hard drives in their cages. We'll, uh, this is our boot drive. We'll get those uh, slapped into this server and uh, let's get this thing booted and have a look. I'm in an order. Gotta open it up. Okay, drives are in. Let's get that, uh, uh, actually that one goes in my machine. Yep, let's get that NIC installed. There you go. That's our fancy smancy 10 gigabit NIC. Uh, yeah, we're ready to uh, plug in a keyboard, mouse, monitor. Let's, Get booted. let's boot this thing. So actually, I'm going to attempt to boot the old Proxmox install that was uh, in the existing, the old server. I'm not sure. Like, I think it'll boot. It'll, it should boot. It should yeah, recognize the, chipset and everything. Yeah. My, my concern is that uh, when the TrueNAS VM boots, is it's going to see those drives or do I have to rebuild this thing? So let's just give it a shot. We'll get up, uh, get some peripherals connected and uh, let's just see what happens. Okay, we didn't get lucky with uh, booting the old Proxmox installation. So uh, we were running S Proxmox 7.2 on the old system. Proxmox 8 is out. So I've got a Proxmox 8 installer on here and I'm just going to I'm just going to start over again and we'll get uh, we've got a solid state boot drive right here. So we'll upgrade that start over from fresh. Uh, we already have a video on our channel detailing Proxmox install with uh, a TrueNAS VM, so I'm not going to show any of that. You, you guys can watch the other one. Um, the installation will be exactly the same. Uh, all right, once we've got uh, Proxmox 8 installed, we'll be back. Okay, update number two. Uh, I actually opted to uh, not use Proxmox this time. <clears throat> I, I just have... Uh, true nas running on the bare metal and uh i did that because uh we actually have another server like this and uh i'll use that for proxmox and uh, any projects i have for the future so this one here is just going to be completely dedicated just for the true nas and network storage and editing and whatnot so this is all built it's running uh true nas is up and running so I'm going to now show you some before and after speed tests. And <clears throat> what I'll do is uh, I'll give you a, a quick little tour in the Proxmox, or Proxmox, let's try this again, in the TrueNAS uh, settings on, uh, on how I tweaked it to get sort of the best performance out of this. And uh, so yeah, back in a bit. Okay, so here's the test of... Uh, transferring a file across the network on the one uh, gigabit connection. 
and I'm just I'm just copying uh, th three old videos, uh, three old folders, and the contents of them. So you you can see that it uh, kind of just pegs out at 113 megabytes per second. The total size is just over 40 gigs, and it doesn't really leave this speed. I mean, it, it just stays here for the entire transfer. I'll I'll speed up the video to the end or cut it to the end, whatever. But um, this is not, uh, it doesn't make me happy, let's put it this way. And then also when I was trying to edit from uh, over the network, um, it, does, it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't working. So yeah, I'll run this to the end and then I will show you um, the after. And then we'll get into some uh, settings in TrueNAS. Okay, so let's test this uh, new um, 10 gigabyte NIC. So on my one of the drives on my computer, I got uh, I got some files that's uh, probably oops, that's not what I wanted. It's about uh, yeah 19 gigabytes. So let's copy these and let's put them over the network to the NAS over the 10 uh, gigabit connection and <clears throat> you'll notice when we start copying under memory here so there's a ZFS cache so it's it literally copies into RAM first and then it'll copy to uh, to your pool so let's have a look and see what we get here okay so there's the uh, cache filling up and we're doing some pretty decent speeds like we just we just hit like 928 megabytes per second there and this is a far cry from 113 megabytes per second so i would say uh that this was a success and uh i'm quite happy with the speeds that we're seeing here okay so here's the here's the exciting thing for me so here's uh, my video editing software, and I've got these uh, these files for this actual video that you're watching. This is this is me editing right now, and uh, you'll see that my uh, my NAS drive is drive Y, and it's WinShare. And uh, if you look at this first um, file, and we go to properties, you'll see that it's the file location is Y on my uh, ingest folder on my true NAS server. So this file is uh, is on the server and you know I can come in here and I can scrub around and uh, the, the performance of the of the scrubbing is great. And before this was horrendous on the one uh, gigabit per second network, it, it just wasn't doable. I mean you could have done it but it sucked, right? So yeah, this is awesome. I love it. Okay, let me show you how I, I set up this uh, 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet setup. Um, I, I'm actually not running a switch. I'm literally going from one NIC to another NIC. So I have a 10 gigabit NIC in my PC and I have a 10 gigabit NIC in the uh, TrueNAS server. So in my PC... I have uh, I have my 10 gigabit NIC and you can see here its connection speed is 10 gigabit and what I've done is I've just manually set up um, an IP an IP address I just chose a class B address so my in this uh, particular instance my computer is 172.18.28.102 for that NIC and uh, I just gave it the dot one gateway for this. Okay, so um, that's the uh, that's the computer side. And then on the NAS side, under network, there's the 10 gigabit NIC right here. And I manually gave it an IP address 172.18.28.101. So the server is 101 and my computer is 102 they're both 24-bit masks and 
this way I didn't have to buy an expensive network switch because uh, the card the 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 10 gigabit NICs were like 35 bucks each so not expensive at all um, the network cable I actually got a couple of 50 foot cables because I'm gonna actually mount the server in a closet um, so it's not in my office because I don't want to hear it and so I, I bought enough cable to go from that closet um, through the drop ceiling to my uh, to my computer and then uh, I wanted to get two port NICs because uh, uh, in a future video uh, I'm going to actually um, connect that NAS I'm going to create a new share that's going to be a time machine backup and I'm going to connect it to my wife's iMac and she'll be able to use um, the true NAS uh, I'll, I'll just create another data set that's marked as a time machine um, backup device and then she'll be able to uh, back up her Mac over the network so that'll be a future video coming up I'll, I'll show you how that's all done so essentially what I did is I wanted to save some money and a uh, 10 gigabit network switch they they get they start get pretty expensive right so and I, I didn't not only do I not have that money I didn't want to spend it anyway even if I did so yeah I just basically did this on the cheap so it's like I think it was like 80 something dollars Canadian after shipping for the two Nicks and then the the uh, 50 foot cat 7 cables were I don't know I think they were something like 18 bucks each it wasn't crazy money and uh, yeah that that got me going Okay, so let's have a look at some of the settings that I uh, that I did in TrueNAS to help speed it up. Uh, first and foremost, uh, this is the pool uh, that was created. Uh, so we have like 35 terabytes. And right off the bat, first thing I did was I disabled sync. Now, <clears throat> uh, if you look this up, um, people will say you shouldn't do this and and in in practice they're correct um, the reason why it could be dangerous is if you you could be have some files that are writing you could lose power or something could happen and uh, you won't have this option um, enabled uh, I'm I'm in a home office and um, typically I'm moving files to the server that I've already got on another machine, so I couldn't care less if the power went off when I was transferring files. I could just retransfer them. Um, if I'm working on a video uh, in the video editing software and something happens, again, I still have the files. So turning off sync will actually help you uh, have a faster throughput into your... Because uh, there's, there's overhead involved with having sync turned on. And then the second thing I did was... Uh, I made the minimum record size one megabyte. And so I think the default was like, uh, the default was like 128K, I believe. Um, but how, having said that, the files that I'm putting on here, they're all large. They're all, they're all uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of megabytes, if not gigabytes in size. So if you had, t you know, thousands and thousands of mp3s as an example you might want to choose a smaller record size right because it's more efficient um although i i do believe the zfs file system kind of compensates for that but it, that gets pretty complicated when you start reading about it so i do know that a one meg record size uh, also helps in increase performance especially when you have large files so i did that and then uh so that's for the pool for the actual share, uh, what did we do here? So I went to, I made sure that uh, the SMB NSF V4 enable that, and then uh, I think that was pretty much the only settings. Yeah, that was pretty much the only settings that uh, that I did. Uh, and of course, the the main part for me was uh, moving away from Proxmox uh, and putting TrueNAS on bare metal. Uh, that way, there the entire amount of RAM could be uh, set to TrueNAS. So, having said that, 
if you're going to be transferring tens or dozens of gigabytes at a time, uh, and you want to and you want to have like the fastest possible speeds, you really need lots of RAM. So typically, True NAS will use a, around 50% of your available RAM as it's as files are coming in. And so for me, that would mean that I'd have about 15 gigs of uh, of RAM to use as a cache. Okay. And so ideally I'm going to up the, the RAM in this server. I, I might, I, I've already been looking on eBay and I can get 128 gigs of RAM and it's not crazy expensive because uh, this server is actually just DDR3 ECC RAM, right? So it's, it's plentiful and it's cheap. So I might do that. And then that would get me about 64 gigs of RAM to use as the cache. Because if you, in, in this particular case here, if I was to say upload 100 gigabytes as an example, it would fill this cache fast and then I would be uh, sort of at the mercy of the speed of this pool at that point. Um, now, having said that, this pool is pretty fast. I mean, you, you saw the uh, the transfer speeds I was getting. It was, it was 19 gigabytes. And, uh, you know, it was going anywhere between whatever it was, 500 and something megabytes all the way up to like 928 megabytes per second over the network. So, yeah, I'll probably increase this RAM. Um, and in this particular scenario, this is the most important um, aspect of getting speeds, you know, decent speeds uh, copying to your true NAS. So, yeah, um, there you go. Just a, just a just a quick little video on this uh, on this upgrade. Um, I, I wasn't happy with the speeds. I couldn't edit from this machine. So, yeah, let's I just rebuilt it and uh did a few tweaks and I think the speed is awesome. And as you saw earlier, I was editing right off this, uh, right off this NAS. And, uh, that's exactly why, what I wanted to do. All right. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you think we're worthy, go ahead and, uh, subscribe and, uh, maybe give us a thumbs up if you, uh, feel like it's warranted. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.